Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, TSB. This is the Daily Sutra. I am Rav Shiva. So, hey, look, um, yeah, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed all the last previous videos that I did. I'm so grateful to everyone that subscribed. That really has helped me out quite a great, great deal. And uh, in return, I'm going to do my best to put out everything that I can so you guys can really understand what I understand, my perspective. I'm not saying that I have the answers, but I'm doing what everybody else on YouTube is doing. We're trying to get a handle on this somehow and try to understand it. Plus, I'm going to give my perspective as the spiritual philanthropist coming from the spiritual aspect of being a yogi and being who I am. So the first thing we're going to talk about today, actually, is the hostages that were freed uh, by Hamas. And we're going to see the different perspectives they have. We're going to see first, we're going to see Fox News, and then we're going to take a look at another uh, depiction of the same thing. Okay. You know, that's Yocheved Lifshitz, an 85-year-old who bravely talked about the terror that was inflicted on her and her husband, who is still being held inside Gaza. She was released overnight with another elderly woman from the community of Niroz and describes the tunnel system. But before that, she talks about how she was taken into Gaza on the back of a motorcycle, how people who were inside the strip civilians beat her. And then she was taken into the tunnel system and fed just one time a day. She said Hamas did provide them with some medicine and hygiene supplies. But she talks about what was clearly a terrifying experience for her and the other hostages as they were broken into groups and taken throughout the tunnels held there beneath Gaza for more than two weeks. Now, we're getting this information as the Israelis continue their strikes. Wow. OK, I just want to say, first of all, without even looking at the other footage, guys, look at her condition. Look at how old she is. OK, first of all, her age. Being on a motorcycle, being in a, in a, as, in a as a hostage in a certain situation. She gave a smile just now. She looks perfectly fine. I'm not saying that she is perfectly fine. I'm saying she does not look that bad, first of all. Okay? Looks like they took care of her, at least. You know? And that's a common decency thing that you can do. Thank God they did. You know? Um, we would have been hearing a different story. But what they're saying here, and the way that Fox News is portraying is one way. Um, we're definitely going to take a look at, uh, you know, at the other way that it's being portrayed as well and we'll take a look at that very soon as well um i don't know how you guys uh you know like you said this is not to play the blame game or take or or, or uh take away from the actuality of the you know horrific events itself anybody in the situation would be horrified but the news media and 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 the the games that they play here the very vicious games that they play here you know to help uh, fuel something as vicious as war, you know, and, and right now, uh, you know, it doesn't look good. You know, there's a lot of children that are getting, uh, you know, real, you know, tons of young children dying here and, uh, people in general, but a lot of children dying. And this is something, and it's not just children. You have to think how really devastating this war is, but we'll get into that in a moment. And, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the other video that we have here as well. Okay. Okay, this one is from Al Jazeera, which is a bit more, uh, I feel, because they have a less of um, a hold on what Al Jazeera can do, that Al Jazeera kind of shows a bit more reality here. And I don't think that they have any other intention. It's not really motivated by anyone. I think they're just trying to show an equal opinion to what's going on, but you can see it for yourself if you just look and pay attention. Let's take a look. Hachavid Lifshitz is one of two elderly women released for what Hamas says were humanitarian reasons. Their husbands, though, remain behind, detained in Gaza. Their release followed mediation efforts from Qatar and Egypt. Well, let's speak to Alan Fisher. He joins us now from occupied East Jerusalem. Alan, one of those captives, as, we, as we've been saying, has been speaking out about the trauma of her capture and also what it was like in, in detention. How is all that being received? ...and gave us the same medicines that we get at home. We were accompanied by a young man on a bike whose hands and legs were injured and who deserved mercy. They provided us with everything we needed and were afraid of diseases spreading. They were also very friendly and shared their food with us. Okay, so you have two different ways of looking at this, um, two different perspectives that they're showing us. And you have to ask, you know, which one do you think is real? Um, I leave that up to you. You know, I mean, if you think logically, if you're in a situation like that and they're so horrible... And they were such, you know, I'm not saying that they're not horrible in other ways, but in the treatment of these specific people uh, that they're interviewing there and that, that, that they're, you know, that they're translating for this woman. And what she says, 
you know, uh, the simple fact that well, the soldiers are saying, you know, that they're Muslim and that they won't do anything to harm them and this and that, and they give them food and medicine and everything they needed, you know, that goes back uh, alone to the ancient way of, of warfare is if they did have captors uh, and uh, they took them in, especially if they were female and children, they were to treat them with the utmost respect as if they were treating their own mother or, or their own children, really. I mean, this goes back into India, you know, into my ancestors, and it goes back into the ancient uh, wars of the Bhagavad Gita. You can read about this in the Bhagavad Gita. For instance, in a righteous war, equals fight equals. Chariot warriors are not supposed to attack cavalry and infantry, those on elephants are not supposed to attack infantry, and so on. The rules also forbid the usage of celestial weapons, divine weapons bestowed by the gods, on ordinary soldiers, as opposed to soldiers of noble birth. The build-up of weapons and armies is done with the full knowledge of the opposing side and no surprise attacks are made. Bhagavad Gita about how uh, the terms of warfare were. You know, today's warfare is nothing like that. You know, they only use the extreme, uh, you know, uh, situations or, or react, you know, uh, responses like what's going on now. Uh, and the, the, the people that use the extreme responses like what's going on now in the Bhagavad Gita were considered criminals. And uh, you can read that in the Bhagavad Gita yourself. I'm not. I'm not condoning anybody to become a, whatever the, you want to call it, a, a Hindu or a or a Krishna or whatever or anything like that. But I'm saying these are other resources of ancient warfare, and how you look at it. Even uh, the Prophet Muhammad as well, you know, as they say, peace be unto him, uh, had the same way as well. Uh, Yeshua, who they call Jesus the Christ, you know. He also believed in the uh, rules of engagement also set out how warriors were to deal with non-combatants. No one should attack an enemy who has temporarily lost or dropped their weapon. The lives of women, prisoners of war, and farmers were also sacred. Pillaging the land was forbidden. Dharmayetta also signifies that the war is not fought for gain or selfish reasons. A Dharmayetta is waged to uphold the principles of righteousness. Krishna on the battlefield as well. So I'm looking, you know, I'm coming from a spiritual perspective. If they did indeed do these things, this is grand. This is wonderful. But the people who are condoning the actions of what's happening today, I really, really question it. And I'm trying to figure out what the motives are. Because it really does seem like genocide at this point when you have so many people. You're talking about it was what uh, at the most, I think it was 1,000, 1,200 people. And now they've gone to five ten times that now you know on the other side or between them both and you have to think uh you know what's the, the what is the necessity of doing this you know what's the what's the outcome that you're looking for you know and i just can't figure out what outcome they can get from this and as i used before in, in the other explanation where i talked about einstein saying if you do something over and over and over and you get the same result but you're expecting someone uh, something different you're expecting a different result you are considered insane. So <laughs> it's either we're insane or they're insane. You know, I'm not sure who's insane here. It's very hard to tell even that because I'm looking more for uh, the, e you know, to equate both situations the same way, you know, to have some equality in both areas when it comes to peace, humanity, and, and getting them the supplies and things that they need, you know, just the basic things that they need so they can survive in any situation in war. That's really mandatory. And I really think that they should do something about this. Um, hold on one moment. Okay, guys, I'll see you guys in the next videos. And uh, thank you so much for those of you who have been, uh, who started following me. I'm grateful for you uh, being there. And also, like I said, I'm going to work as hard as I can to put up as much content as I can. Not just any content, but content that, that's pertaining to things that I find very important, and very significant. significant. And I hope that you all uh, really enjoy this and, and gain something from it. Your feedback makes a difference for me because your comments and your feedback help me to understand the audience. So I can really, really work and gear myself towards giving you the things that you want. So please, guys, give me that feedback, all right? I am TSP, the spiritual philanthropist. Watch my reactions in the next videos. What's coming up next will be why the black community feels that they should not be involved in this war and their reasons behind that. So stay tuned, guys. Like, you know, hit that notification button, uh, that bell, actually, and that'll give you an advance uh, notice of when I'm putting up my next video. All right, guys. See you guys soon. Stay safe. <laughs> 
your likes, uh, subscribing and sharing my work helps me in many ways. Ooh.